Bar Beacon, a local nature reserve in Warsaw, is one of the highest points in the West Midlands. It offers spectacular panoramic views and is home to one of the last remaining lowland heathlands in the area. It is also the site for a significant First World War memorial. Over recent years, the memorial has seen some hard times and has fallen into a poor state of repair. With its future hanging in the balance, the Council's Countryside Services team managed to secure heritage lottery funding. A large part of raising the bar project is to restore the war memorial. It's important that we, we are restoring the memorial because it's uh, one of the iconic areas in the West Midlands. It's really high, it's important for local people of Walsall and also it was built some 80 years ago to, to remember the people in the First World War. So it's important to remember them and for current people who use the site and also future generations, we've had a lot of school kids up here doing different projects. Uh, so them to, to respect the area and respect the area for the future. So if it looks that it's well kept, looked after and people are concerned and, and, and feel a lot for the area, then in the future hopefully that will continue. The project coincides with the commemoration activities for the outbreak of World War I in 2014. So what we want to try and do is look at a rededication of the War Memorial um, to encompass all the uh, people that have suffered dur during the wars since the First World War and, and make it relevant to today as well. Midland Conservation, a local company, has won the contract to carry out the work to restore the memorial to its former glory. Midland Conservation are really proud that we've been appointed by Walsall Council for the Bar Beacon Memorial, uh, especially with it being a local job on our doorstep uh, and only five minutes from the office. There's uh, more works that are now being done to the memorial uh, to open it up to the general public in, in works to the, the stonemasonry, the steps and the paving, uh, the central octagon and obviously the, the roof itself is in such a state of uh, disrepair that uh, there's a full renewal of timber replacements and, and metalwork. The plan is to make the site safe and secure for its life in the 21st century in order to cope with the new challenges that this brings copper that was on the roof that was unfortunately stolen three or four times so previous to the work going on that's behind us it was covered in tarpaulin uh, so it didn't look in a, in a very good state really and also the stonework which has been worked on uh, was weathered away so there was like the, the water would get in there it freeze and it would break up the stonework the topograph which is basically a map centered around Bar Beacon, looking around, seeing all the points around that had been stolen and removed. So we're having a new one put in there. It's going to be new railings in there as well. So it looked totally refurbished, but still in keeping with the heritage of, of the building. With the memorial and the Bar Beacon Local Nature Reserve situated at the heart of the sprawling conurbation of the West Midlands, there was always more to this project than the actual restoration work. That the Heritage Lottery are keen to see the community involved in the project, so it's not just a standalone restoration where people come up and admire it, and that, that's the end of the end of the, the story. But what we we're trying to do is get people to understand the, the story behind the War Memorial. I mean, myself, I'm an Aldridge lad, born and bred, and um, you know, it, it, it'll certainly strike with the local schools and community, and hopefully, and it'll put it back on the map. And we used to come up here years ago, like as kids playing football and things like that. But uh, I, I walk, I walk my dog um, every Saturday and every Sunday. In a project like this, there's a lot of very specialist work to be done, requiring not only traditional craftsman skills and techniques, but also sympathetically introducing some very modern solutions and materials. The roof is completely rotten on top of the dome. We, what we're having to do now is strip off all the timber work and replace it section for section exactly uh, how it came off. Um, we have to replace all the structural elements and the fixings to it so that by the time the roof coverings go back on, obviously we put in a robust structure back in place. As you can see, the timber now is completely shot. These are the original fixings, the bolts, which we're actually cutting off and we're, putting, we're put, going to put new stainless steel bolts in there which their lifespan could be anything up to 100 years. The metal framework 
there's a steel steel plate at the top which is going to support the finial. What we're actually going to do, we're going to replace all the purlins. These plates, those are staying, it, they've all been coated up, so those, those are in good condition. These, these are new, all this timber work now, basically this is the wall plate which is going around, which the guttering, the new gutter will fix to the side of the wall plate. There's going to be a zinc cover which will come down just over the nosing of the cornice. That there then, then the new sheeting will start from the, the gutter, take it all right the way up, all the way to the top section there, then the new finial will actually sit on top of the covering. With the stonework, um, there's a lot of lamination of the stone treads and steps and, and various elements which require attention and repairs to be carried out. We've principally got two types of stone here. We've got a, uh, a forest of Dean sandstone, which is, is what the steps are mainly constructed out of in the outer octagon slabs. Uh, and then we have a limestone, which is from Portland, and uh, those are principally used in the, in the plinth walls and the outer base and the stone columns that you see that forms the main structure. We're actually going to take all the steps up. We're going to spin the stone with a specialised spinning cup uh, with a five inch grinder. All the slabbing will come back up as good as new and as good as the day in, back in 1933. Then we're going to re-bed the steps, put them back to the natural line and to the natural bedding. We're going to put it back to its former glory. There's a lot of copper staining on the stonework. It's embedded over 50, 60 years. We're taking all the staining out, so obviously when the general public and we finished, they'll see almost a new stone. So all in all, over the next couple of months, we've got a lot of work to do. Just as things were progressing well, the coldest and longest winter for many years arrives and work grinds to a halt. Specialist works such as lime mortar and the lime plastering, uh, those works have ceased at present and uh, halted just due to the temperatures. Uh, lime mortar, we should be working really in temperatures of three degrees and rising and we've been struggling to maintain that uh, of late. This, this isn't a trade, it's a passion. This is definitely a passion. That's why I'm, I'm up here, free, <laughs> freezing cold, soaking wet. With the deadline approaching and the wintry conditions continuing, the work must still go on. The main challenge is the roof and, and choosing a, a material that wasn't going to be as a uh, you know, target for metal thieves in the future, which was one of the reasons for the choice of, of VM zinc. This is the, the standing team sheet, this is the centre sheet. Uh, it's a standing team and it's what we call a double, double undercloak. So basically, what will happen is the next sheet will latch onto that, and when we'll get it uncovered, you can have a little look, and it takes it out to the hip detail. There's, there'll be five sheets in each bay. Now I'm gonna put some seams on. Hello, there we go. Hold that in position, and then, and that's a really firm fixing. This is the color that copper would be after it's gone completely, which could take somewhere like this, could take up to 20, 25 years. You, you can, this is the gutter, which is as close as we could get to the original uh, copper gutter. Um, and this was originally lead. And what we've then got is we have an outlet, which is the original outlet position. So that's what actually drains the gutter in. in the, with zinc, we're taking it up the whole barrel of the roof first. Uh, to bring it down, so that's what's sort of taking the time. So now we've, we'll, we'll be filling in these sides, up to here, up to the hip. So there, they, they'll be the next stage. After months of hard work, bad weather and lengthy delays, the project is nearing completion. And at the start of a glorious British summer, we can see if it's all been worth it. F2 
after nine months of hard work by various contractors and stonemasons and roofers, we've, uh, we've reached the completion of the actual restoration work of, of the part of the project. And now we're moving on with the community involvement side. We've actually got a real sort of focus for getting people up here now because they, they can see, see the work that's been done so far. The memorial, especially on a day like today, looks, looks absolutely wonderful in, in, the, in the glorious sunshine. Um, almost like a, a beacon on the hill. Um, and we've, we've had a lot of positive comments from visitors and site users. I'm very impressed with it. Yes, yeah. We've been up times before and it's really been dilapidated, you know. We heard about all the trouble with the thieves and now it looks very nice. Uh, there is local regiments that have used the site and helped us in volunteering on bands on the beacon early in the year and hopefully they're going to almost adopt the site and use it for their different events and functions using the memorial. So there is that link with the military going on, for that's what the site was uh, originally built for. The ongoing community involvement that we'll be doing there, we'll be emphasising the fact that it is a war memorial and we hope that will sort of build up the, the respect for the site and sort of demonstrate the council and the Barbican Trust commitment to the ongoing maintenance and trying to keep the community involved in the site. From a neglected monument to a shining beacon, a memorial to be proud of, somewhere to admire the panoramic views and to reflect and remember the sacrifice of our servicemen.